And with that, we welcome Sunakt Pharma and CFO Patrick Remblad. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Cecilia. Happy to be here. Um, I'm here today to give you a short presentation about Sunakt Pharma. Before I start, just a uh, short disclaimer on forward-looking statements. Sunakt Pharma is a Scandinavian biotech company focused on developing oral agonists, targeting the melanocortin system, treating, treating uh, uh, inflammatory diseases. There is a huge unmet medical need in auto, for autoimmune and inflammatory diseases, um, for, for efficacious and safe uh, treatments, as current uh, treatments are associated with uh, uh, risk versus benefit uh, problems. Our uh, drug candidate, AP1189, is in phase two development in various inflammatory diseases. Synact Pharma's business model is to develop the assets up to phase two and then divest to or partner with larger pharma pharmaceutical companies for late stage development, launch and commercialization. Our product or drug candidate, AP1189, is a selective um, agonist stimulating melanocortin receptors 1 and 3. By doing that, uh, AP1189 reduces excessive inflammatory response in the body. And it also, through its other mechanism, promotes what's called resolution. And resolution is a, a way of cleaning up the inflammation in the organ and promoting healing and re restore restoration to normal function. Importantly, AP1189 reduces the inflammatory response, but it doesn't suppress or block it, which is associated with serious risks related to infections. Our compound has been tested in two clinical trials, phase 2a trials, both of them read out in 2021. In a study uh, in COVID-19 induced respiratory insufficiency, APA 1189 showed that it could, um, it could recover patients to normal lung function four days faster than, uh, than placebo. And the recovery to normal lung function is basically measured as, as no longer need for supplementary oxygen. It also showed that it could, uh, that we could um, discharge patients faster from hospitals after being treated with AP1189. Those were very promising results, uh, but we have due to the, the evolution of the uh, COVID-19 disease um, with the Omicron variant, variant and uh, vaccines decided not to pursue uh, further development in, in COVID-19, but we are exploring AP1189 uh, and the feasibility in other virus-induced inflammatory diseases. We tested AP1189 in a phase 2a study on um, treatment-naive patients, um, in R R treatment-naive RA patients um, in two doses uh, and placebo in combination with uh, the standard treatment for RA uh, methotrexate or MTX for four weeks. Um, and the, on, on the primary readout, AP1189 in 100 milligram showed a reduction of 15.5 points in the clinical disease activity index. That was a statistically significant difference versus placebo, and also importantly, a clinical relevant reduction in the disease activity. In addition to these positive efficacy data, um, AP1189 was safe, well tolerated, and no serious adverse events were reported. In the BEGIN study on the treatment naive uh, RA patients, we had several other secondary endpoints. Um, most important ones uh, are the ACR. Um, and the ACR stands for American College of Rheumatology and measures, similar to the, the primary endpoint, it measures 
the change in disease activity. And ACR20 means that in a group of patients, it measures the number of patients that, uh, that achieve a 20% reduction on the score. In the BEGIN study, AP1189, 100 milligram group, 61% um, of the patients achieved a reduction of more than 20% in the ACR score. That was, again, statistically significant versus placebo. But as you can see here on the, on the chart, it was also in the same range as a class called the JAK inhibitors. So data reported from the JAK inhibitors phase three trials in patient naive or treatment naive RA patients after four weeks. And the JAK inhibitors is a very important class. It's a class of pharmaceutical products that have been on the market for about 10 years. They are very effective. Um, for the treatment of, of uh, inflammatory diseases, but they are associated with serious side effects. It will be the target for AP1189 going forward to be on par with the JAK inhibitors also after 12 weeks of treatment, but with the remained uh, favorable safety profile. Last year, we um, we uh, completed preclinical testing, enabling us now to test uh, AP1189 for up to 12 weeks in human. And we also developed and tested a, a new tablet formulation, recently confirmed that that will be used for further development of the product. AP1189 is very promising, and we believe that it has potential in several uh, diseases um, in, within the inflammatory area. But being a small company, we must focus. And although we will test AP1189 in other indications, such as kidney diseases, our focus will be rheumatoid arthritis or RA. RA is an autoimmune disease um, affecting 1% of the population. It represents a huge market and a market that is growing. Uh, it's expected to surpass $30 billion in three years' time. Current treatment, um, as you can see on the, on the uh, right-hand side, is not that effective. Uh, almost 50% of the patients that receive the first-line treatment do not get an adequate response to that. And for those patients who then get a biologics, only one out of three, um, sorry, one out of the three do not get an adequate response. We believe that AP1189, with its emerging profile as a once daily oral effect effective treatment um, with a favorable uh, safety profile, could be a very attractive uh, treatment in RA. We have decided to develop AP1189 in RA in two uh, paths. We will continue in treatment-naive patients, the same uh, type of patients as we, um, as we tested in, in the BEGIN study. We will continue that in EXPAND. And EXPAND is a 12-week uh, study where we will test uh, AP1189 once daily, oral, 100 milligram, and placebo in combination with uh, MTX. We will recruit 120 patients in sites uh, in Europe, pretty much the same sites as we had in BEGIN. And we, are, uh, we have uh, agreement with, uh, with vendors and we are uh, preparing for uh, submission of necessary applications for clinical trial approvals in, uh, to relevant authorities and are ready to start the study in Q3, subject to, uh, to regulatory approval. The objective of, uh, of EXPAND is to confirm the safety and efficacy of AP1189 after 12 weeks of treatment in, in RA patients. That is something that is uh, important for us, and it's something that has been discussed with potential business partners. Those potential business partners are also very interested in the 
in the second path, um, the DMARD IR. DMARD IR stands for uh, Disease Modifying Anti Aromatic Drug Inadequate Responders. So, those patients that do not respond adequately or not at all after three weeks, uh, three, sorry, three months of initial treatment. And, and this, this development uh, path and this phase two study, um, we intend to run under an investigational new drug uh, application or approval in, in the US. Therefore, the design, um, the approach and the design is subject to feedback, guidance, and ultimately approval by the, by the FDA. But we intend to run it as an adaptive phase 2A, 2B study we're, uh, called RESOLVE. And we, um, we intend to have the first part um, testing AP1189 in three doses um, and placebo all together in combination with, with MTX for four weeks um, in sites in US and in Europe. The objective with that is to um, determine uh, the uh, reduction in, in disease activity of AP1189 after four weeks in, in this new group of patients and guide for dose selection into the, uh, the second part. If we can establish that AP1189 is effect effective and safe uh, also after 12 weeks treatment in treatment naive RA patients, and if we can reduce disease activity in DMARD IR patients after four weeks. We believe that this project is very attractive for potential partners. We have no reason to doubt that data will come out positive, but there are no guarantees. There's always a risk that, that effic effect effectiveness or safety um, is different to what we have seen now. And that is a risk that current and potential future investors need to be aware of. With that, I will conclude by confirming our strategy. Synax Pharma will develop AP1189 with a focus in RA but also in other indications and we will expand our pipeline. We are confident that if we do that and we deliver on those activities, positive results from business development activities will follow to the benefit of Synact shareholders. Thank you very much. And thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Cecilia. I will start by uh, changing track a little bit. You have communicated that you, you plan to be listed on, on Nasdaq Stockholm, the main market. Could you give us just a brief update on, on what's going on there? Yeah. Thank you for not asking me more about science. Uh, <laughs> so we, uh, after the communication of our guaranteed rights issue in March, we applied uh, formally to, to NASDAQ. And uh, the uh, assessment period is, is three months, which we are now in the middle of or coming to, to an end. I'm, we are being assessed by auditors and lawyers. Um, I'm positively optimistic about the outcome, but I'm also um, aware that there might be risks and hurdles on the way. But we are we are on track so far. And I will keep away from the science and stay on yeah, the finances you. then. Uh, you mentioned here the rights issue. Yeah. What's your comment to, to the outcome and how will the money be uh, be used? Yeah, the, the outcome, uh, we, we, it was guaranteed and we will, uh, we, 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 uh, we collected 150 million Swedish uh, uh, gross and, and approximately 125 million uh, after issuing cost. And it will be used to what I've uh, explained here today, um, the, 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 f the largest part of it, of course, to the two big clinical style, uh, trials that we, are, that we are planning. And you mentioned here the discussions with uh, potential business partners and how they have influenced your, your yeah. studies. That, I found that very interesting. Could you tell us a bit more how you're able to use the feedback that you get from these discussions to, to strengthen Synact's offer? Um, yeah, so, so the, um, I wouldn't say all of the, the ideas about the design come from, from business partners, but, but of, of course the, the discussion has been very fruitful. Um, we've 
had a lot of uh, dialogue with, with various um, stakeholders, um, which have ultimately led to the, the uh, conclusion that uh, these are the two important trials that we want to conduct in, in RA. Um, so yeah, I'm yeah. That's so yeah, with them you can make your offer even stronger. Yes, we believe that with, uh, with uh, the data that uh, we expect to see from these uh, trials, our offer will be uh, stronger. Well, thank you so much for coming here and telling us about it. Thank you, Cecilia. It was a pleasure to be here.